Hello my friends and good evening and welcome to another edition of Masterpiece Theatre with your host Patrick from True Grit Productions. Tonight I'm going through the top list of restaurant complaints according to a consumer report of over a thousand people surveyed. Now this video is especially dedicated to all those waiters, servers, and bartenders out there who are trying to make more money and who could use just a little bit of advice to sharpen and hone their skills. And um, this is also going to be a video um, of general interest to people out there who uh, may not necessarily work in restaurants, but we've all eaten out, we've all had great experiences, we've all had terrible dining out experiences. So um, whether or not you work in the restaurant industry, go ahead and leave a comment below describing either your best or your worst experience at a restaurant and make sure to tell us why it was what it was. So really the point of this video um, is to show waiters and servers out there just how important their jobs are and just how much control they have over the amount of money they make um, but also how they impact the guest experience because you know uh, the position of waiter or server is not one that carries a lot of glory you know um, a lot of people look down on people who wait tables in restaurants. I know I've caught a lot of flack on YouTube when I said that I waited tables. Um, even though I have an online video course, the Waiting Tables Video Masterclass course, um, and I'll put a link below for you to check that out. You can read the reviews on that from the people who um, have found my work useful and helpful to them making more money. But I have always um, kind of looked up to waiters in a way um, that maybe a lot of people don't because I think the job is not easy. Again, it does not come with uh, a ticker tape parade or a hall of fame. You know, um, a lot of people don't respect it and yet it takes a lot of guts. It really does. And there's a lot of um, ways that you can you know, uh, really mess up. So it's not easy either. So um, anyways, the first and the top 10 of restaurant complaints is dirty utensils or table. And that was 76% of the people surveyed said that. Now dirty utensils, um, this is one of the things that can be stopped by a server or a waiter. You know, whenever you go to put down utensils, you can check them beforehand or if they're you know rolled up you have to you know if you've been working at a restaurant for any amount of time chances are you've been rolling silverware it's usually part of your side work so you can know if the dishwasher is doing their job and everything works great and the silverware is coming out clean um, because if it's not then that's probably some type of equipment or employee issue that's not directly related to you as the waiter. Now the cleanliness of your table as a waiter obviously is your job and is in your direct control. So as a waiter, of course you want your station to be impeccably clean because there really is nothing worse than sitting down as a restaurant guest and you put your arms on the table and it's just sticky, you know? I mean, it's just like one of the grossest things. So wipe down your table with soapy, you know, a soapy wet rag if you have to before before work. Um, or if you have, uh, you know, uh, tabletops, you know, um, linens that go on the table, just make sure that they're clean. So the number two one is dirty or ill-equipped restrooms. Fortunately for servers, this doesn't concern you. However, if this is a restaurant, you know, uh, manager, you know, then obviously you need your restrooms to reflect the professionalism, you know, of your restaurant. So 
restrooms are important. If you're a server and you go in the rest in the restroom and it's completely dirty, then you need to alert a manager ASAP. So number three is impolite or condescending servers. Notice we're only to number three and already uh, we're seeing how a lot of these issues are directly affected by the waiter or the server. We haven't even gotten to food taste or quality. Now here's the thing. If you're a waiter or a server, obviously you have your own unique personality. But what you have to do is try to be a little bit more self-aware of the things you say, how you say them, your body language, your tendencies. You're almost going to have to play psychologist, psychiatrist with yourself to make sure you're not doing anything annoying or offensive. And so it's really not easy to figure out what you're doing that might be annoying someone. So this is where you have to really pay attention to the responses you're getting over time and through experience and seeing how people respond to your style. And obviously you want to be con you want to be kind and polite to everybody who walks through those doors. Okay. So, you know, that's just part of your job. You have to be polite and kind, whether you think the people you're serving are cool or not. So number four is servers with a sloppy appearance or poor hygiene. Now, again, we're at number four and already three of these are directly affected by the waiter. This is something that um, usually does not happen right away. You know, people, when they get a new job or they interview, it's almost like when you first get into a relationship with somebody and you're on your best behavior and you're, um, you know, trying to smell nice, trying to look nice, you know, having, having your clothes all ironed and, you know, everything's looking sharp, your shoes are shined. The question is, after a couple of months, when you kind of already built a good rapport with your, your supervisor or your manager or the person who makes the schedule and you're on pretty good terms and then you start to slack a little bit. And then you kind of, you know, you slack off on ironing your uniform or maybe you uh, push the limits with how far and how long it goes before you run your clothes through the laundry. And so this is something that you have to actively, I know it's, I know it's boring. It's not sexy. It's not, it's not exciting, but it's absolutely necessary. And here, this, here you have guests complaining about it. Now, a sloppy appearance can also be, um, I know that we live in strange times and, you know, 20 years ago, people sort of collectively understood that you should exercise and try to look your best and that the people who did exercise and, um, you know, tried to look their best would get certain benefits. But now we live in a time where like people are demanding acceptance and praise for being overweight, disheveled, uh, not taking care of themselves, letting their bodies go, and they're blaming everything but their own decisions. And they're not taking responsibility for it. Well, guess what? How many movies have you gone to see lately that had an obese person as the uh, starring role? All right, the lead actor or the lead actress. And so if you don't want to see a movie, you know, uh, with, with a bunch of uh, obese people um, and, uh, and people who are overweight and who have let themselves go in the health department, the same goes for your, for your waiter or server. And people are looking at you like that. People want to be waited on by people who they don't cringe when they look at. Hey, <laughs> I didn't make the rules. So that's number four. Number five on the top complaints that restaurants get is meals or beverages served at incorrect temperature. Again, this is something that a waiter can have a hand in because if you're not putting enough ice 
uh, say in somebody's Coca-Cola or in their water, you know, and it's a hot day, that's super annoying when, when you don't have enough ice in your tea. Yeah, and that's a big problem for a lot of people who go to restaurants. Um, as far as the food at incorrect temperatures, it, as a waiter, if you're paying attention to when you expect your food to come out so it's not sitting in the window under the heat lamp, because it's getting really cold, that heat lamp's not doing much for it. And um, yeah, you gotta, you gotta be on your game, you gotta be on your toes thinking three steps ahead. I cover this in uh, my video training course, link below. Number six, meals are not what you ordered. So this could be any number of things, but again, this could come down to server error. And this is why when you're taking people's orders, you should write them down um, and make sure that you can read your own handwriting and then also make sure that you repeat the order back to them when they're done and confirm that that's what they order and this will take care of a lot of the problems. Sometimes the kitchen gets it wrong, but usually, usually it's not a kitchen issue. Uh, let's see here. Is that number six or seven or, okay. Um, so the next one is feeling rushed to finish or leave by the server. 61% said that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, this is number seven on the list. And this is a big one. And this is really unacceptable because I I don't think I've ever worked at a restaurant in my life where the manager put a lot of pressure on me to get the guests in and out. And I actually worked at places where some of the female servers would unabashedly and shamelessly brag and boast about how they would purposefully not drop dessert menus after they cleared, uh, you know, empty entree plates. And so they could turn over their tables faster and get a new set of tables. And I don't know, maybe you'll make a little bit extra money flipping your tables faster, but I guarantee you, if you are violating this cosmic law of ha uh, in hospitality that the guest is entitled to all offerings of the restaurant, then I promise you karma is a biatch, okay? And karma is going to come back to get you because... I'm not trying to brag or anything, but I always tried to put the guest first. I always tried to think, what would I want as a guest? And now I'm self-employed and traveling the world. And the reason why I am doing that is because I understand, at least to some degree, how to take care of people and, and what people need and what people want and how to, how to meet those wants and needs uh, through commerce. Maybe as far as romance and love, not so much. But in the realm of commerce, yes. And, and so while you have these other people who think that they're getting ahead in life by cheating people out of opportunities like that, really all they're doing is uh, solidifying their permanent place in the rat race. So never rush the people to get out of there. And I know it's, it's not easy. Sometimes people literally will camp in your section and sit there all day long and maybe even make a show of it, but that's very rare. So always go through all the steps of service because that's what the guest showed up for. If the guest figures out that you're pushing them out the door, they probably won't come back. So number eight is going to be the server removing your plate or beverage before you finish. This is another big one. And this is again, something that waiters servers, bartenders, everyone else can avoid easily. And it's if there's food on the plate, uh, first of all, assume that they're not done. Now, if you've, if you've made a couple of passes, it's been five or 10 minutes and they're still sitting there and there's just a little bit of food left, what you can do is just go up and ask them, are you still enjoying uh, um, that, you know, whatever they're eating? Are you still enjoying that burrito, sir? Or may I take that plate out of your way? You see how you see how you made that a benefit to them? You 
you both highlighted the fact that they are there for their enjoyment, but then you also gave them the option of getting something out of their way. Yeah, you know, like, <laughs> that plate is really bothering them. But when you frame it like that, it's like, oh, well, <laughs> I am too important to have this burrito leftover sitting here staring at me. As a matter of fact, you're right. I am done. Get it out of my way, server boy. Servant. No. But seriously, so don't go up and ask people, are you still working on that? I mean, that's so dumb. Like, like, are you at a construction site <laughs> asking somebody if they're done, like, <laughs> like sawing a 2 by 4 down? <laughs> you still working on that? I mean, come on. People are not there to work. They're there to eat and to enjoy their meal. So just keep that in mind. Number nine is the food does not look or taste as described in the menu. Fortunately, servers and waiters, this is not your responsibility. However, if you get enough of these complaints and enough unhappy uh, guests saying things like this, if you catch a wind of this, it might tell you that you're not working at the right place. So number 10 is slow service. And again, a lot of this comes down to the server as an individual but also it can be how the restaurant is run. But most of the time it's on the server at an individual level. And so again, if you're thinking three steps, five steps ahead, when there, when you think there's nothing to do, uh, when you only have one or two tables and you've already um, taken the orders and put them in and now you're just sort of waiting for things, if you will just mentally visualize what needs to happen next, where things are on each table and just make a mental note of it and you'll be surprised at how over time um, it's like your mind is one giant whiteboard with information to be retrieved as it needs to be as opposed to sort of fretting over all the details and, and trying to I don't know, know everything just sort of have a general idea and, and always be thinking Oh, well, this person ordered iced tea, so I'm probably going to need to refill it or bring a new one eventually. Oh, this person ordered, um, you know, a cheeseburger with fries. So, uh, you know, they're probably going to want ketchup and they're probably going to want more than that little chintzy amount that they, you know, <laughs> that they give you by default in the kitchen. So these are just things that you can be thinking about way ahead of time and, um, yeah, so those are those are the top 10. I'll put the link to the rest of this article below, but to me that's the most important. What I wanted to highlight mainly is that the server is directly responsible for maybe 7 out of, you know, 6 to 7 out of 10 of these top complaints in restaurants. So um yeah, if you think about it, don't 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 let that be a burden on you. Don't let that be an undue amount of pressure, let that be a motivator for you. Let that make you understand that what you're doing does matter and it is crucial to the guest experience and people like eating out. I eat out all the time. I rarely cook for myself. Um, you know, so I'm eating out all the time and, uh, you know, and, and if it gets to the point where eating out becomes a pain, then I just keep it really simple at home. For myself you know I just stay in because why go out and spend more money on something negative now uh, once again if um, you want to learn how to make more money as a server a waiter or a bartender you can check out the link below to my video course and uh, it's only $19.99 and it also comes with a free gift which is very helpful uh, for people who work in the restaurant business because you may not always be getting scheduled for as many shifts as you'd like. So what do you do with your free time if you need to make more money? Well, starting a side business is a great way to do it and I show you how. So um, the uh, the free gift is actually worth $24.99 which I sell on a different website but because I came from uh, working in restaurants I like to look after people who were in a similar or are in a situation that I was in uh, five or six years ago, back when I used to work in restaurants. And so I want to help people who, you know, were in a similar situation as myself. So that's why I do this. 
And plus, I'm just generally interested in hospitality and, um, I don't know, I still like, I still like, uh, the restaurant business, even though I don't work in it anymore, uh, directly outside of my video course. Um, it's still interesting to me. So something I, I personally enjoy learning more about and staying up to date on. So I hope you found this video useful. Um, it's kind of, kind of interesting to know what customers and guests think, you know, when they're not filling out those little comment cards because they rarely do. <laughs> and, uh, you know, when they're being asked truthfully and they don't have to worry about, you know, their, their opinions <laughs> affecting the person who was, you know, serving them that night. So it's good to know all this info, take it all in, breathe it in and, um, yeah. And then turn it into something that makes you more money. So with that being said, thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if this video is uh, up your alley and vibes with you. And I will see you on the next one. Take care.